Hello everyone, welcome to today's Bible study uh, live stream. Today we're going to be jumping into Psalm 110. So I invite you to grab your Bibles and read along with me as we read through Psalm 110. Uh, BibleGateway.com, Bible resources, two, uh, two things that you can use. Um, a resource you might say, but I said the sentence weird. Uh, but you know, I like me a physical Bible. Uh, and if you don't have a physical Bible, but you'd like one, you can send me a private message and I'll try to hook you up with one. Um, but, uh, for now, uh, let's take a second to remember what we read yesterday in Psalm 109. Um, Psalm 109, uh, was basically these really awful insults that were being thrown to David and David was giving up his grief uh, to God and asking God to do something with it yet still trusting that God was good and remaining faithful and just turning and giving it all to God um, which was pretty awesome uh, but one of the things I was thinking of especially when I got home and the Bible that I use at home is this Jesus centered Bible um, and there's a part that is highlighted in blue um, from yesterday, verse 25, which read, I am a joke to the people everywhere. When they see me, they shake their heads in scorn. So, in, but in Matthew 27, 39, which this kind of seems like a little bit of a mirroring, Jesus hangs on the cross. The people pass by and shout abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. There's a lot of, like, Jesus foreshadowing uh, in this uh, poem and that those personal attacks that Jesus took for us. God stepping down from heaven to, to you know, walk in our shoes, and that includes feeling that kind of abuse. Um, that was one of those things that I was kind of thinking on, and, you know, so thankful that God stepped down to take that, that he wanted to be amongst us and dwell with us, show us the way, and um, suffer along with us um, in order to save, redeem, and restore. It's awesome. Uh, but yeah, then that leads us into another Psalm of David in verse 110. There are two verses in here that are highlighted in blue. So we'll take a second uh, after we read it in order to see what it's saying, and um, yeah, without further ado, let's jump into Psalm 110. The Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. The Lord will extend your powerful kingdom from Jerusalem you will rule over your enemies when you go to war. Your people will serve you willingly. You are arrayed in holy garments, and your strength will be renewed each day like the morning dew. The Lord has taken an oath and will not break his vows. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord stands at your right hand to protect you. He will strike down many kings when his anger erupts. He will punish the nations and fill their lands with corpses. He will shatter heads over the whole earth. Powerful imagery there. Uh, but he himself will be refreshed from brooks along the way. He will be victorious. May God add a blessing to the reading of Psalm 110. So before I get into uh, my reaction there, I just want to take a second to highlight the parts in blue. So uh, the first one is actually verse 1. Uh, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your em enemies, making the footstool under your feet. So Psalm uh, 110 verse 1 Jesus quotes this verse uh, to the Pharisees during a discussion about the identity of the Messiah in Matthew uh, 22 verses 
41 to 46. Uh, so it's kind of cool that Jesus calls back to this. The Lord said to my Lord, which is interesting. Um, it could also just be translated to my Lord. I don't understand. The Lord said to my Lord. Oh, little L. Little L. That's the, the difference there. So the big Lord, God, said to, um, like... David's master or something like that, I guess. Uh, so, interesting kind of thought there. They used Lord and Lady quite a bit um, back then. So, in this instance, it's a little bit messy. But, essentially, God laid down and that promise to David. Uh, and then Jesus later on quotes it to be like, Hey, see... See what's going to be happening here with me? Because I am the Messiah. Not me. Jesus. Um, then the next part, uh, Psalm 110, verse 4, which reads, The Lord has taken an oath and will not break his vow. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Here, Jesus is described by the writer of Hebrews as the high priest who is in the order of Melchizedek. Uh, Hebrews 5, 5 to 6. So, um, yeah, just that royal priesthood and all of that stuff in there. So there's some foreshadowing and the importance to identify even the Messiah in this uh, psalm. So some interesting foreshadowing there about Jesus and quoting it. Uh, foreshadowing what the Messiah is, um, and the promises, right? So this works twofold. It's the promise of the coming Messiah, but also the promises of the coming kingdom uh, where David will lead, and the promising of the end of exile, which these books would have been uh, written to, writ or collected, and people that were in the midst of exile would have been reading that God's promise has been fulfilled with David. It's going to be fulfilled in the future with the Messiah. And once, you know, David came back into power, the people got unified once again. And God purged, you know, the, the bad stuff from the land. Often, you know, it's like a fruit and the fruit gets plucked. Um... Or like a bonsai tree, which needs to be be trimmed to be healthy. Um, and that's kind of what our faith um, and, you know, our journey was kind of like. And someone like me has been transplanted into that tree. Uh, but the imagery here is like, whoa, that one line in verse 6 really, really caught me off guard. Um, he will shatter heads over the whole earth. Um, which... Yes, but like, wait, what? Um, you know, where is this God that we've been reading throughout the Old Testament that goes like, um, you know, it's not my evil, it's not my desire to see evil people be destroyed, but for them to turn from their wickedness, turn and live. And um, in like Jonah, when, um, you know, Jonah's like, oh, I knew this was going to happen. I knew you were going to forgive. You're so slow to get angry. You're so slow to do all this stuff. Your love is, you know, enduring forever. And what we've been reading throughout all of the Psalms, God's love is everlasting. It is unfailing. Where is that in that line? He will punish the nations and fill their lands with corpses. He will shatter the heads over the whole earth. That is a very harsh, harsh line. And it's one that I struggle with to a degree um, to kind of wrap my head around. I'll be honest, I do. But then, like, let's go back one more verse. The Lord, the Lord stands at your right hand to protect you. He will strike down many kings when his anger erupts. So why would God's anger erupt? So what do we know about God 
that has caused his anger to erupt. When people come against his kingdom, yeah, when people come against him, sure, though, he does a lot to show, um, you know, he doesn't get angry when people persecute him and put him up on the cross, but they get angry when uh, people that are supposed to be representing him have put a dollar sign on getting to, to between him and worship, right? When he flips the tables and everything, uh, he gets angry at... Uh, a lot of the injustices in the world when uh, people forsake the lives of others for money, when um, the widows and the orphans aren't looked after, when um, you know people sell their own children into uh, s like sex servitude, and uh, he gets angry at those things, at misleading. Uh, people at mistreating children. These are the things that God gets angry at, and He is saying that He will bring justice. You can't hide from Him anywhere around the world. God isn't in uh, the business of only being in one place. The world is His kingdom, the world is His footstool. Um, and he loves us so much that he will step down and protect those all over the world. That's, um, how I, uh, am currently understanding that verse, but it's a hard one. When you read it, you're like, wait, what? Just these other nations. And we can have this tendency to make it like, oh, those others, those non-Jewish people. But then when we actually read things that have gotten God angry in scripture, it's people that are following him that are, you know, yeah, uh, doing a misservice and a misdeed, um, purposely hurting others, like, especially in like false gods and stuff. Those are the things that get God angry from what is coming to scripture at the top of my mind. It makes that verse make a lot more sense. At least it does to me. Let's pray. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ. I thank you that you did come down to earth. And that's what we're in the midst of the season of celebrating you coming down to earth to model the way for us to take your life and give it up on the cross, to pick it up again, to conquer death. But you stepped down for heaven, from heaven. You became vulnerable. Lord, help us to follow in the footsteps and do what you require of us to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with you, Lord. I thank you for challenging verses like we found here that get us to actually think about you and what you care about, what, what, what you're passionate about, and help us be passionate about those things too. When we think of acting justly, I think of bringing justice to those in just situations. When we think of loving mercy, it's celebrating when someone turns from their evilness. When it comes to walking humbly with you, it's while looking on you, not thinking of ourselves as less, but thinking of ourselves less. As we focus on you and those in whom you have entrusted us with. So help us to do well, Lord. Help us to follow you well. I thank you that you are the, the author of all creation. That you, in partnership with us, are writing the story of our lives. May we trust your penmanship for the past, the present, and the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you guys very much. Have a fantastic rest of the day. God bless.